Okay, let's dive in. If you're uh, anywhere near the world of AI coding assistance recently, you've probably felt things shift a lot. Definitely. There's this new player, Claude Code, making some serious noise. And well, that's what we're digging into today. It's rapid impact. Exactly. And, you know, there's so much talk. So our mission here is really to nail down the facts. Mm -hmm. What are the actual trends? What are users really saying about Claude Code since it launched? Yeah, cutting through the hype. Especially how it's affecting established tools uh, like Cursor. Mm. We're sticking strictly to what people are reporting, the experiences shared in the sources we looked at. No speculation, just the data. And those early numbers we saw, they're uh, pretty eye-opening, right? They really are. Anthropic reported, what was it, over 100,000 users signing up in just the first week. Mm-hmm, first week. That's fast. That's not just, you know, trying something new. It feels like a statement from Anthropic. They're positioning Claude Code as a like a dedicated tool specifically for coding, yeah. aiming right at Cursor, Copilot. Absolutely. It's a clear strategic move. They're not just adding a feature to a general model. They're building something purpose-built for developers. Like specialized software versus a general tool. Precisely. Hmm. Think accounting software instead of just a spreadsheet for complex finances. It's about defining that next step in developer workflows, not just uh, grabbing market share. And you mentioned seeing migration. Yeah, there's definite momentum. We're seeing it on places like Reddit. You've got multiple threads, users saying flat out, I've switched from cursor to Claude code. And it's not just the numbers switching, it's the reasons, right? We're hearing from actual developers. Exactly, the why is crucial. Like that one user who mentioned moving off cursors pay as you go model, Found it unpredictable, maybe. Could be. They switched to Claude Code Max, part of a fixed subscription, right? Yeah, and they specifically said it was uh, way better for handling files and context, even when using it within Cursor's terminal. That's interesting. Very. It suggests the core AI capability was the draw. And then there was that other comment, really simple. Claude Code was just better for me. Sometimes that says it all. Just better for me. <laughs> it's blunt, <laughs> isn't it? But it tells you the friction points with the previous tool, whatever they were, were real enough to make someone jump ship entirely. Yeah. And these kinds of comments are popping up quite a bit. There was a developer on Medium basically said they dropped Cursor's AI features almost completely. After just a week with Claude Code, they felt like they weren't going back. Yeah, oh, just one week. And a tech blogger kind of echoed that, saying Claude Code essentially made Cursor feel unnecessary for them. They went back to using VS Code, but with Claude Code integrated. Okay, that's pretty strong feedback. So this raises the big question then, what's actually driving the shift? It can't just be novelty. What are the core factors people point to? Well, the sources highlight a few key things consistently. Uh, first, and this seems huge for bigger projects, context handling. Much better context handling. Okay, what does that mean practically? Like, it just remembers more code. It's more than just lines of code. It seems to grasp the architecture, the whole project structure, dependencies, how things connect, you're not constantly re-explaining things to the AI. Ah, okay. So less of that frustrating loop of, wait, remember we discussed this file five minutes ago. Exactly. Less re-explaining, fewer errors stemming from lost context. That promise of understanding the full code base seems to be a major pull. I can see why. That sounds like a massive time saver, frankly. What else? Second big thing is uh, workflow integration. It fits right into VS Code, the terminal, the places developers already live. So fewer separate tools, maybe fewer subscriptions? Potentially, yeah. And that ties into the third point, pricing clarity. The sources mention this a lot. Claude Code is bundled with Pro or Mac subscriptions. It's predictable. No weird credit systems or sudden limits, apparently. Predictability is good. Developers hate surprise bills. Definitely. And um, the quality of the output itself gets mentioned. Specifically, Sonnet 4, one of the underlying models, is praised for generating more, let's say, reliable or thoughtful code, especially for complex multi-step tasks. So the engine itself is powerful. Seems that way. Developers are noticing the difference in the actual code it produces. So, okay, strong momentum for Claude code, but is it completely replacing cursor or is it more nuanced? It's definitely more nuanced based on what users are saying. Hmm. While Claude Code is getting picked up for those heavier multi-file complex tasks where context is king, uh -huh. Cursor still seems to have its niche. Maybe for really rapid prototyping, quick edits or workflows where that highly interactive, almost live editing feel is valued. So some developers might be using both. 
Absolutely. We're seeing reports of people using them in tandem, mm -hmm. leveraging Claude code for the heavy lifting and maybe cursor for quicker or smaller tasks, using the right tool for the job, essentially. Okay, that makes sense. So bringing it back to our listeners navigating all this, what's the key takeaway? Well, if you're grappling with complex projects, juggling lots of files, and really need an assistant that understands the whole picture, right? and you want that integrated smoothly into VS Code or your terminal with predictable pricing, well, the trend we're seeing is that a significant number of developers are choosing Claude code, sometimes instead of cursor, sometimes alongside it. A clear shift driven by specific needs like context and integration. Precisely. And this whole situation, this rapid adoption, this move towards more specialized, powerful AI agents. Yeah. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? Wonder what? It raises a really interesting question for the future. What does this tell us about where development tools are heading? And what does it signal about the growing role of these dedicated AI agents really becoming core parts of our day-to-day -day coding workflows?